And this is, you know, you've got to be totally new. If you're not totally new, then you're going to get bored. Um, so if you haven't used version control before, if you haven't used Git, then this is for you. So I'm James, and I work for a company called Codenigma, and we do Drupal stuff all the time. Um, we have a stall and we have sweets. So if you haven't had your the sweets yet, then make sure you go and visit us. Um, there's no cost apart from the little social interaction. Um, I've been doing Drupal for about five or six years now. Um, all aspects of Drupal really I've been involved in, sort of site building, development, theming. Uh, I've got a background in print, which I'll refer to now as Git Talk. There is a relevance. Well, I'll start with that now, actually. In the old days, I used to work in an advertising agency. We were doing all sorts of virtual work, etc. And um, we had version control. So, you'd be working in your fantastic brochure. You'd be working really hard, and uh, you'd be getting almost ready for print, ready to go, and suddenly there'd be some major change. So, a bit unsure, a bit uncertain, you'd make a copy of that file. Make your changes, get it ready, tidy things up slightly to make it a bit more obvious. Brochure file, brochure old, keeping hold of it just in case. And then you go away on holiday, and while you're away, there was further changes. And so this is what happens. So I'll make another copy, <coughs> and then. Another copy. You come back from holiday, sort of pull out, decide it's right. This time, be really organised. I'm going to make myself uh, an envelope of uh, all the old versions in there. So you start off with your first one. And over time, you get a few more. And it's nicely organised. To see when you're doing things. Go away on holiday, and that's what happens every single time. Basically, humans are really bad at doing version control. So, we get machines to do the work for us. So, what happens? Have a project. Google project, obviously. You make some changes. When you're happy, you let the system know. Happy with those changes. So it makes a note of what you did, who you were. And you share those changes with the rest of your team. Over time, you get these series of changes that you've made. Sometimes you revert some, you go back a bit, and do things slightly differently. We're just basically building up a series of changes, with version control is recording them, you know what you did. <coughs> There's more you can do as well, so here's a small project, you've made a few changes. With version control, you can also make a copy of where you are at that moment in time. You can experiment with some new changes that do things slightly differently. And if you're happy with those, you can share them with the other copies. So everything's the same. Here's another one. Gone off, made a copy, made some different changes. Then we make a change to the original. Version control, we can track that, we can merge things back together, and everything's the same. Very difficult to do manually, let the machine do it for us. So that's version control, conceptually. Now we're using Git. Um, why are we using Git? It's 
is just a program, it's a form of version control. There's others. The main reason we're here is Drupal. Drupal was using Git. Why did Drupal choose Git? It was using a version control system called CVS for many years, which when it came out was super duper. But over time, uh, the requirements changed, better technology was available, and then a choice was made. Basically, uh, Git is it's free, it's uh, widely used, there's lots of good documentation, and so those are the main reasons for going with it. Um, you may have heard of GitHub. GitHub is a fantastic place to explore to see what other projects uh, are using Git, and you'll find there are thousands and thousands of other projects using Git um, to look after their code, share it with each other. So, because we're having a, a quick introduction today, um, some commands to get you going. First command is read that book because it's an open source book and it's really good. It's, it's where I learned Git and fantastic documentation. You can just go and download it. You can buy a hardback version, um, a paper version if, if you so wish. That book and I will teach you how to use Git using the command line. So, first major question who here? doesn't ever use the command line, or only um, uses it under duress. Okay, so there's enough of you. Okay. Photoshop. I spent years just working in Photoshop. Photoshop is a totally visual tool. Um, I used to do loads of retouching for magazines. Um, totally visual. I went from that to learning command line, so if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I was thinking about this earlier, actually. Who here knows Photoshop? Okay. You know all the Photoshop shortcuts that you know. Most of them don't make any sense whatsoever, but you've learned them. They're just difficult. Command line is actually far simpler. It's logical. There's some great tools out there for learning things. GitHub itself has got this fantastic online tool for actually learning Git, and it gives you a command. <coughs> so, I'll show you a few um, commands today. First of all, just command line stuff. So, we're going to make our new project, so we're going to make a folder. Our folders are generally called directories. This is how we do it on the command line. This is how you do it in the finder if you use a Mac. Same thing's happening. There we go, we've done that in the finder. On the command line, we've made a directory and then we've issued another command CD. We've just opened up that directory and gone inside it. That's where we're working from. When we're in there, we issue our first git command, git init. So we're 10 git, we're going to start a new project here. It's saying, git, I want you to look after this project and be in control of it. Git's quite chatty at times and it tells us what it's done. This is handy and useful. You'll find that git on the command line tells you what it's doing all the time. So, it started a git repository. repository that's all the information that Git keeps about your project. If you have a look at your folder that you created, your cool project folder, it doesn't look like there's anything there. This is because if we look at it on the command line, Git has created this .git folder. And .git folders, uh, you won't see them in your uh, GUI application. But this is another good reason why you use command line, you can see what's going on. Now I'm just going to show you what's inside there. You don't need to know this, but just in case you're interested, explore that. That's how Git organizes itself. We'll ignore that for now. So you've got, you've created this project, 
you've told Git that you want Git to look after it. Git has gone ahead and created this invisible folder where it keeps information. You can forget about that for now, but work on one. So, we're listing what's inside that folder, nothing that we can see. Let's go and create a new HTML file. Nice and simple. We save it. <coughs> Um, we're just listing in the command line what's there, and we can see that we've saved this file put in the HTML. And then we want to ask Git what it thinks about it. So we type Git status. And like I said, Git can be quite chatty and it can tell you what's going on. So, what have we got here? It's noticed that it's a new file and it's untracked. That means it hasn't done anything, made a note of it yet. So we need to let Git know that, we're, yes, we want Git to watch that file and watch the changes in it. So we just followed the instructions it gave us. I've got that one. It's told us at the bottom there to use Git add. So use Git add. Let's see what the Git status tells us now. So we've added that change that new file that we've added and now we're happy with that we just want to commit it set it in stone so we just follow the instructions again and we add a little message just saying what we've done very useful when we look, look back at it later and um, git chastity tells us one file change it's added a file Nine insertions, so probably nine lines in that file. And we can have a look at the history. Git keeps that history, every change that we commit. And every change that we commit has a unique reference. And who did it and when. And that commit message, that nice summary that you tells us, oh, you've modified, made a change. We can just add that change in. It tells us, okay, made a note of that, do you want to commit it? We add a nice little message to our commit. There we go. The one file change, the one insertion. <coughs> One deletion. In that case, that means it's taken out one line, which was the empty title, and it's put in a new line, which is a new title. And we can have a look at our Git log and see that two things that we've done in our project. We can make that a little bit nicer to read. So that's going from the bottom upwards. So the latest changes are at the top there. So that is a total of five commands that we've used and to get yourself up and running with Git, that's not a huge amount to have to learn. Go back to that book. It's really friendly, but it's really useful. It'll take you through step by step. editing files, normally making your projects, sending those files somewhere. Why do you bother using this? Isn't it just extra stuff to do? Okay. You're backing up your work as you go. So you make a little change, you're adding that into Git, you're leaving a little message of what you did and why, and you've got this nice sequential order of things that you've done. So, you can make changes with confidence. Here's a really, really um, simple example. Uh, say you've made a, some weirdo change to your index.html. You've tried out some fantastic new technique that doesn't really work. And you can see that you know, a change has been made. You think, now nah, I want to revert, go back. 
could do commands there in your editor, but how many steps did you go back? <coughs> Uh, Git's telling us that we can, if we want, we can git check out dash dash to discard changes. So that's fantastic. So we can do that. We'll just go back to where we were when we last committed it. Really good Drupal example. When you do the discard, yeah. is it restoring an image in the file or did it be a Unapplying the changes. Just yeah. going back in time to the last commitment. And I've just shown you there one file. But a good Drupal example is um, your update a module. Now, um, are some of you new to Drupal at the moment? Is Drupal new? Um, if you haven't used it before, sometimes these modules contain a huge number of files. Uh, so, if you update a module and lots of different files have changed, it doesn't work, you want to go back. <coughs> um, it can be a lot of files to track. But if you've already made a commit of when it was last working, you just need to issue one command and go back to where you were. So another really, really good reason for you on your own, okay, new to version control, what else is it really good for? Really good for deploying your work. So you make all your changes, you make your local site fantastic, you've got to push it somewhere live. So there you are, you're at your kitchen table on your fancy rack. You've got to get it to a server so everyone in the world can see it. Um, FTP? Um, FTP is nice and simple, lots of people know how to use it, you often got it built into editors, you can just push your files up. Drupal is it's a large project and there's an awful lot of files, not just in the core, but in extra modules as well. It can be an awful lot of files to track. So you start making changes and adding in different things, it can be a bit of a headache. So some FTP tools help with this sort of thing. But there's so many issues with it. Um, if you've ever used FTP and had it fail on you, you'll understand what I mean. It's also uh, unsecure, so um, probably use F SF yeah. FFTP anyway. Um, Git's got this great system of remotes. <coughs> so we've been doing everything locally on our, our local, little machine. Um, what you can do is set up a remote, and that is another machine that will just uh, talk to your copy of your files and make sure they're in the sync. So it can be a bit tricky to set up, but uh, other people have set it up now for you. So GitHub that I mentioned before is basically a place <coughs> you can store your code and share it with others. And it works something like this. So. You work at the kitchen table, you make some changes, you push them up to uh, your remote, and then that can be pulled down to another machine, so your, your server over there. So every remote has a name, <coughs> well, one is called Origin, and you can issue a command like that. And you might have made several commits and made quite some big changes. And change lots of different files, and then just with one command, it can go shoom, straight up. And then your other machine can go shoom, pull everything back down. So, up to date and in sync, hardly any effort. Very, very fast. So, the pull was issued from the file. That's right. That's right, yeah, because the Git's got some shortcuts built in, so um, it can automatically uh, yeah, associate a bunch with a remote. And the push and pull is always by GitHub or whoever. GitHub or whoever, yeah. yeah. You can set it up so it's, it's, it's just on your local network through the machine. There's a Q 
huge variety of different ways of doing it, but the most straightforward and easy way to do it is something like GitHub or GitHub, and you can just create an account, push it up there. It's really straightforward. Um, so it is, it is really a really fast way of shifting files around. Um, it's secure, and it's reliable. Um, if something did go wrong on the network, halfway through, it would stop. I wouldn't make a mess of your files. So that's two good reasons. If you're working on your own, or in a team, that you'd use this in a team. And that's the main reason for version control to be in existence. <coughs> So we had that little thing going. So you're working locally, you're pushing stuff to a remote, it's getting pulled down to another server. You can just extend that. Other people can push to your remote, and then you can pull it down to your server. So suddenly you can collaborate with a team wherever they are. I'm just going to show you a nice little simple workflow. This is probably how you would start out. All small teams start out this way. <clears throat> I haven't really explained branches yet, but I've just sort of mentioned them. Um, when I was showing slides earlier, making copies. So, um, in this very simple workflow, you just have one branch, and everyone makes changes to it, and they just get added on, <clears throat> and they just get shared around. Problems with that are if you don't push and pull often, then maybe they get out of sync too much. And that can be a problem. So you need to be concerned about that. Also, if you've only got the one branch, let me go back to that, and you're pushing and pulling regularly, what if you're making some really, really fancy new changes? and you just want to share them with your colleagues, but then suddenly there's some bug on the server that you need to fix, and then you've got all these funky changes, um, what do you do? Do you just kind of try and get rid of those and then add in the hotfix? It gets a bit tricky. But we've got this concept of branches. So, we use one development branch, so this is where the funky changes go. So everyone pushes and pulls and shares all their code. You use a production branch. So when you're happy your funky changes settle down aren't causing issues, you merge it into your production branch. And that looks a bit like this. So on our right here, we've got all the changes that we're pushing in new concepts in HTML. <coughs> when we're happy, we merge that into production branch. So that's lots of changes all going in at once. The nice thing about this is you see these green lines which are sharing the devs that's that's a branch with each other. It's rapid work. These blue lines, that's the production branch. One person saying, okay, at this point, let's merge this in, we're happy and get that onto the production server. So a new command for you, I get how much takes That shows us the branches that we've got in our git repo. And here we've just got a massive branch. That's what we just with. This is how we create a new branch. And it's a copy of that master one at that point in time. Created and we switched to it. So we're now working on this production branch. So if we get one big branch again, we can see there's two branches, we're working on production. They're the same at the moment. So, yeah. That's right. Yes. So it looks like you've got the same. That's right, it's using the same tool in different ways. Um, 
Um, so what you're doing when you're doing Git checkout is, is you're telling Git to be on the stock a copy of the repository at this particular point in time. And we added um, a P flag, I think, uh, a B flag, I mean. So we want to check out the current state of the branch we're on. So there are other ways you can use checkout. So you might want to check out a particular commit from the history system. So we um, we're just checking out the master again now. So now we're working on the uh, master branch, and often you'll find that this is used as a development branch. So we do some changes, and they're really good, they're stable, we're tested, we're happy, and we want to merge them in. So get production looking the same as master. So. We can see that we added some changes there. Our uh, first couple things I've showed you, we've added some more. We can just double check the changes that we're making. Let's see what the difference is. So there you go, we've added some more things and taken some things out of our HTML file. So I'm going to check out the production branch now. Merging the master branch and we're ready. It's merged in those changes. So now they're both the same as each other. And then we can go ahead and push it off to production. You'll find it looks a little like this. So on the production side of things, quite stable. So on the dev side, Lots of changes that you're making all the time. And every now and then when it's stable, make it push to production. I've shown you two branches. You can have as many branches as you like. Branches take up practically no room on your hard disk. They're just one little file that points at a certain point in your history. So you can sort out your major panic, even though that you're in the middle of doing some major changes in your dev branch. There's a major panic on pod, you can create a hotfix, merge in, done. And as I said, you can add more, you can work in so many different ways. And if you work on different teams, uh, different companies that all have their own methodologies which suit them, um, there's no right way of doing it. Um, it's just a tool and it's very flexible and you'll find that there's lots and lots of different ways of doing things. And I'll leave it there. <coughs> Any questions? I didn't mention merge conflicts. Uh, merge conflicts, what happens when you've made some changes locally and you want to pull in some changes to someone else. And what happens if you make changes on one line, in one file, and someone else made exactly made a change to exactly the same line in the same file, different change. Git won't know what to do. So it's going to be a human choice. So Git will raise the merge conflict. And basically it will say, I have no idea, you'll mark this file to show the changes that you made and the changes that someone else made, can you please sort it out for Now, merge conflicts are very scary when you get them. <coughs> they are, however, once you get shown how to do them, not too tricky to sort out. But mainly, once you set up a practice of working in different branches and pushing and pulling, and working closely with your other team members, you'll find that they rarely have It's seriously, um, you'll find that generally, <laughs> it generally can be sorted out by process and work. So 
it's making sure that you can make small changes and get those changes shared with everyone as soon as possible. Or if you're working on something longer term, that's quite different, making sure that you structure your project so you can keep those parts separate. So, it, yeah, they often can be avoided. And I think if you can avoid them, that's what, yeah. I think then you've probably got a good process. Um, I've used version control in the past where you've put out a file and nobody else can put out a copy of the copy that they can modify. Just get the deal with that. Yep. You know, anyone can make a clone of uh, your files at any time and make any changes. Um, have to implement your own social structure. Um, so it's not built into the... It's not built in. What we do is we have um, production repositories that only certain developers have access to. So it's a completely different repository. But because Git just treats everything as branches, it's quite happy to merge from one repository that's named one thing to another repository that's named something else. So we can have as many different developer branches as we want, and we, we enjoy that freedom. And then when we need to push something to the whole then it's a case of whoever has permission needs to pull in the latest changes from the development, and they have to commit those to the production repository. I thought you said at the beginning, we need to make mistakes and she said you just actually throwing it back onto the humans. Well, it's... Because <laughs> in previous ones, um, you book something out and it's marked that user A's got to. All the other users can take a read over the process, they can't take a and go to update the process. I think, because Git, um, the way it stores the changes, they're not at a final level. Yeah, they are, they're very storing them at a chunk level. They're at each level, which is not changing. Yeah, so, so it's, it's quite happy for me because several people too work on the same part. And you can get merged conflicts, but you can also uh, merge several changes in one file together at the same time. It does do it, and it, it handles it very well. So. Ben, 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 ben. Yeah. Um, if you use 
here have is your book as well doing a big graph tools and change. Absolutely. As well. Yeah, and it's a fantastic you know, system for merging in changes from different branches and ebooks. So